Sometimes when you want to connect to a, uh, a Raspberry Pi, you want to be able to do it without having to enter the password because it can be laborious if you happen to connect to the Raspberry Pi a lot uh, and you have to keep typing in the password, it's, it's a bit annoying. So there's a way that you can do that and still keep it secure uh, but only have have to enter the command line options and then go connect straight to the Raspberry Pi. So first of all, I'll connect to the Raspberry Pi. And at the minute, I'm having to type the password in. So I want to be able to do that without typing the password. It's quite easy to set up. So if I look at, in the, I'm in my home directory currently for the Pi user. And what we need in here is a, a directory called .ssh. Now it doesn't exist by default, but in the .ssh directory you can put options um, for your secure shell um, environment. So what, what we need to do first of all is create a, a, an encryption key which we'll use to connect to the Raspberry Pi without having to enter the password. So as standard on the Raspberry, in the uh, Raspbian uh, environment, there's a thing called ssh keygen, uh, and you can use this to create the we need a public and private key, so it'll create that for you. And you need options minus TRSA, which is a, the encryption type, minus B. So the is number of bits in the encryption key, which is 496 bits, and then minus C to create it. And at the end, you type in your like just a, an email address, uh, which you want to use. Uh, it doesn't really matter what it is. So I'm just using a temporary one at the minute, just like a, an example one. And when you type enter that, it will create the uh, public and private key for you. You're expecting, um, and if you just use the uh, the default directory, uh, it should hopefully it should create the directory for you. Uh, yep, yeah, and so just hit enter for the passphrase, and it just creates it for you. So if I list it, uh, and it shows shows the .ssh directory. And in the SSH directory is the public and private key. Okay, on uh, so now we need to so, so we've got a public and private key, but it won't let us access it straight away uh, without us telling it that we want to use this public and private key to be able to access to the server. So if you go into the .ssh directory, and then we have to create a file called um, authorized keys. And the authorized keys, any any. Any public key in the authorized keys will allow uh, will be allowed to log in as long as the person remotely has the private key. And the private it's important to keep the private key very private because that allows whoever's got that access to your server. So if someone else gets hold of it, they've got instant access to your server. So that the security there is to make sure you keep keep your private keys very private. So I can create the authorized keys file uh, with the public key. Uh, and I redirect it to file called authorized underscore keys. And then uh, we need to set up the permission on this file. Uh, permissions in the .ssh directory are, are really important because um, if you don't get the permissions right, then um, it won't allow you to use it. So we have to do a chirp mod to modify the access rights. And we say any group users or other users, uh, we just set to equals, which means uh, don't allow any access to those to people of members of groups or other. Uh, and then for the user, which is our, our, the Pi user, we just allow it to, to uh, read that file. And then when we look at the permissions on the file, let's just read. Uh, I'm going to have to now, so this is the private key. We shouldn't keep the private key on the server, so you want to transfer it back. Uh, uh, for now, I'll just uh, copy it back to my local machine. So I'll quit out of the Raspberry Pi secure shell. Uh, and then I'll, I'll change back to my desktop so you can see the file on the desktop. And I'll copy it back uh, from the ser server, the Raspberry Pi server. In home pi uh, and .ssh and it's id underscore rsa locally. Currently, still we're still still using the password at the minute. So now that we've got the 
the private key locally, we can now use that to connect to the Raspberry Pi without having to enter any password. So if I do a secure shell to, um, and what you do is you use the command line on secure shell minus I, and you tell it the private key file, and then you just type pi at, and then as usual when I'm, what's what you want to see? And now when I hit enter, hopefully it should just connect straight straight on. So there I am straight in. Don't have to type any passwords at all. And I'm on, on the uh, on the Raspberry Pi. So if I come off the Raspberry the secure shell again, that gives me an, uh, the ability to just do something quite good as well. Because it means that if I ever want to locally create a script file where I create a script of things to do on the remote uh, Raspberry Pi, I can do that without having to re keep typing passwords and things. So I can use the key. So if I've been there's an ifconfig file which tells me information about uh, the network and there this is actually run on the remote machine on the um, Raspberry Pi you can see that because the IP address that it's returned for the the, the um, wireless LAN is the same as one I've been using to connect to the actual Raspberry Pi so you can actually run commands uh, remotely and then you can add those to scripts so you can write scripts of things you want to run remotely uh, that's that's a really handy thing to do.